Okay, so I, I ran that animation test and I have kind of the timing down. Um, and now I'm actually feeling a little pressed for time and I think I have most of the assets I need. The, the big ones I need to change, I need to um, create the assets for the guy in the background so he can eat the guy in the foreground. But I've already created these assets. So now it's just kind of copying them into the right place and then playing with atmosphere and then animating. So I'm going to kind of jump right to it. So I know I've got my bug assets and this guy's assets. And, and then I know he's going to stay up and I'm going to play with his eyes and I'm going to play with his jaw and show him kind of chewing and enjoying the, um, the bug. You know, so just kind of showing you things that I can play with, that I have assets for. And I can show his eye rolling and all kinds of things. What I, the only thing I haven't designed are, I guess, my character Y assets. No, not my character. Character, where is he? Z. Big guy. So really helpful to use these folders because we have a lot of things going on. Here he is. All right, so I have him here because he needed to be in my landscape from the beginning, character Z. So if I'm pretty comfortable at this point building assets and knowing what I need, as long as I don't have more than one frame in the timeline, I can start building assets right within the stage. And that, that keeps me from having to like move whole folders over and then place them and scale them in. So let's just do that. So I'm going to take character Z. I'm going to rasterize him and I'm going to duplicate him and then move him up a little bit, up and forward. I want him to move a lot slower than this guy did. That will sh show size. Godzilla doesn't move as fast as Bugs Bunny. And so I just keep on doing Command Z. And I am not going to play with his eyes. I could. Oh, no, that's getting it's too much. <laughs> Instead, he's just slow moving. His mouth is just going to be open. He's going to kind of push up and then back. Remember the kind of squeeze and stretch is very helpful to animation. And I can, at this point now, like puppet warp him a little bit, anchor his feet, and just kind of show him stretching a little bit, like kind of tilting back, maybe breathing. I can do that a little bit here as well. I want to spend my time on the things that are actually effective not tiny details. Kind of the awakening of the sleeping giant, right? So what do I have? I have a cycle of three. So from here to here, I guess it's four, to here, right? And at that point, I need the tongue to come out. So what can I do? I can take this whole tongue group and duplicate it. Bring it down. You can use command left bracket to bring the whole folder down. With my character Z guy, so it's in the background more. And then I can transform the whole folder. I can flip it horizontally. So there's a new tongue. It's got a bug in it right now. I don't want that, but I'll fix that. And now I can make it bigger. And I can play with distorting it. I can't warp it because there's multiple layers, but I can distort it and kind of put it at a different perspective, different angle. Because this tongue is going to be coming at me. Like so. 
Okay. So I'm going to mark this tongue with a different color. I'll make a blue because my character Z layer is blue. I'm going to put all my character Z in one folder. Select Shift. It's my character Z group. Gentle Giant. And even though I'm doing this and building assets on the stage because I don't have frames in my timeline, it's not messing them up. And I have the tongue group for character Z actually in the character Z group. So let me pull that out. Okay. So now I have to figure out what tongues are actually useful. So really, yeah, none of these are, except for that first one. So I'm going to remake all of these. So there's the tongue. I duplicate. I puppet warp. Remember, because it's cut out and on its own layer, I anchor it. I'm able to, pump, pump, uh, to puppet warp it. And I'm going to stretch it out now towards us. A little bit. Ah. And I can take this tongue group and actually move it above the, the middle ground at some point. But right now I'll keep it behind. Then I'm going to duplicate that and puppet warp it. Anchor it and stretch it. And you guys will realize that once you've built an animation, like you'll just be in shock that anyone ever does this <laughs> in real life. It's a lot of work. Okay, now at this point, I do need to move the tongue above. And I can start customizing the tongue a little bit by erasing away from it. So I'm going to use a soft edged eraser. Because I want this tongue to feel like it's coming from the background. Coming into the foreground. And then pretty quickly, I need to wrap it around this creature. So I have one, two, three. And now the next one, duplicate, transform. I'm just going to warp it. I want to make sure it comes down and around pretty far. And I'm going to move that up all right, until it's over the top of my guy. And then I'm going to puppet warp it. Ah, look at that big tongue. So I can actually curl it around the front of this guy. Okay, so here's the tricky part. <laughs> I need to kind of cut it out crisp again. And let's see, I'm going to puppet warp it and get it in the right position. There we go. And then I just erase away from it. And 
And probably the easier way is just using the lasso. Just showing it kind of wrapping from underneath. And then what I can do, select around my creature with the magic wand, and then select the inverse, and then delete from the tongue. Oops. The part that I don't want over. And then if I do Puppet Warp, now that it's separated into two, even in that one layer, I've got kind of two different aspects I can play with. Okay, okay now I'm going to duplicate that again, and I'm going to Puppet Warp it again, and bring it up more, and then start bringing it towards the mouth. So this is that integration with another character. Doesn't really pay to be subtle in animation. You'll see that once start, things start to move, like only the, the things that are pretty bold will be seen. So I can smart sharpen these elements and blend them. Right now they're all turned on. Okay, and now I need the creature, make, need to make a duplicate of the creature. And now this creature has to start changing with my tongue. So now that it's wrapped around, put my creature, let's see here and start moving it back. I can even select it with the tongue layer and then transform it and start moving it slowly back and smaller. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. Let's see. Try it again. I can take that creature with this tongue. And I'll leave that one. Now I'll take a duplicate of that creature, the next tongue, and these are the ones I want to kind of move together, transform, and shrink. There we go. So it's kind of pulling it, pulling it in. I need to clone stamp a little bit on that tongue. We're using all our compositing skills here. Getting it to work. And then I'm going to merge those two together. And then duplicate that. Transform them again a little bit smaller into his mouth. I'll use some clone stamp just to clean it up. And I can puppet warp it a little bit. So I'm struggling a little. 